Good morning and welcome to Tracy's Art Party. Let's have some fun. This is Alice Hendon with Art Tangleology, and I'm going to teach you through or walk you through a, pro, um, a project today that I'm calling a galactic explosion. We're going to paint this picture um, that looks a lot like the uh, galaxy and we're going to add some tangles when we're done and make it look like they're exploding out of our little solar system here. Um, so we're going to start first with some very basic supplies to paint the galaxy part of it. And then once that's dry, we'll come back and add the tangles. So let's get started on that. Supplies are basic. I tried to, tried to keep them to a minimum. We're going to start with, um, I'm starting with a, a 10 by 10 sheet of paper um, from the collection, which is from Hanamula. It's a nice watercolor paper. It's it's not real rough and textured. It's got a, a bit of smoothness to it, which makes the tangling part work well. But it has enough texture to it to make the watercolor part well. We're going to need that. We're going to need a pencil. We are going to need a permanent black pen to draw the tangles with afterwards. We're going to need a white, um, I'm using a white Posca paint pen. Uh, if you have a white jelly roll, that could work. If you have white acrylic paint, that could work. Um, any kind of white that works on watercolor will work. I don't know why I have that in there. It doesn't belong. We're going to need either a toothbrush that you don't still use or a fan brush. I'm going to need a couple paint brushes. Um, I am going to be using a number eight round, which is from Zen Art Supplies. I also have a number, yeah, it's called round for a reason. There you go. It's a number six silver brush. We're, I'm going to be using some white fluid acrylic, some watercolors, something round, and some water that I can spray just in case. So let's push all that back out of the way. We're going to start with a pencil and something round. Um, I met Tracy years ago. Well, I didn't actually meet her. I started following Tracy years ago. And one of the things that she used back then was frog tape, which is a cool little thing um, that I think we've replaced with other, other products since then. But anyway, the base of this makes a great um, round thing to trace and if you'll notice it's got the little openings right here where it shoots out that's going to be where I stop to make my explosion so sit your paper sit your round thing down on your paper kind of center it and then just hold it in place and with a pencil lightly trace around your round thing you don't have to have a great pencil line and honestly I don't know if you're even gonna be able to see that on camera um, but it's just a, a round pencil line that is left open right here so I can have my explosion going out. Um, if I want to, I can even make like a light pencil line to remind me to leave that open. The next thing we're going to do is start with watercolors. And I have this set of Schmincke watercolors that where I've taken this tin and I've put all my favorite colors in here. All Schmincke colors because that's the one I like the best. Um, and then I started looking at the um, galaxy explosion that I've already that I showed you a minute ago to figure out what colors I wanted to use today. And I know that I need a pink and a purple, so I'm going to use Opera Rose and Quinacridone Purple. I need a, a turquoise or a teal, so I'm going to go with this cobalt cobalt turquoise. And then I needed a couple shades of blue, so I'm going to go with French Ultramarine. I may not be saying these names right. Hilo Cerulean and Thalo Sapphire Blue. Those are the colors I want to use. So I just made myself a little chart to help me remember. I'm going to lay that right up here, probably out of your view. That's okay. I'm going to start by wetting down my watercolors with this water bottle I brought out. So those can be sitting, getting ready. Then I'm going to take my number eight round Zen Art Supply brush and I am going to flood this whole area 
my round area that I traced using that frog frog roll. I'm going to flood this whole area with water. And then in a minute, when we start putting our colors in, the thought is that they will blend into each other and run. If you go outside that little pencil line, it's not a big deal. You just keep going and doing your thing. Okay, the first one I want to use is the French Ultramarine. I have a little cheat sheet somewhere that I now can't, can't find. That's okay. Um, I'm going to load my brush with this French Ultramarine and just come around the border that I put down my circle, circle line. And just come around it with that French Ultramarine. It's going to run into my, it's going to run in towards the circle because of the water I put down. I'm going to try to cover up that pencil line. What I find when I do stuff like this is my circle keeps expanding and getting bigger and bigger. And that's okay, it doesn't matter. Um, then the next color I wanted to, to put in here. Sorry, I just dumped water right on my desk. Uh, the second color I wanted to go to is the uh, turquoise. This is actually called cobalt turquoise. I'm going to put some of that up in here in this area and just let it start working. I'm not going to use a lot of it, just a little. Then I want to go to this um, Helo Cerulean. and put it in between the cobalt turquoise and the French ultramarine. It's a really pretty, pretty blue. I actually like it better than the other, other ones I've got on here. Um, come back and add a little bit more of that French, it helps if I stick my brush in the right place, into the French ultramarine. Darken that color up a little bit. And just keep bringing that border around. I can even bring it up a little. And I feel like I need a little more of it in here. Of course, as I do that, whoops, then that Helo Cerulean color. I need to bring that back in a little bit. Okay, moving things around. Um, then before we get too far, I'm going to bring my pink in. And just put some of that in here. This does not have to be a perfect straight line, and it shouldn't be because it's a galactic explosion and you don't have straight lines with explosions. A little bit of purple. I'm actually going to bring that down in a little bit. I want to bring some more of that turquoise back in there. Mix it a little bit in here. I'm going to bring a little line of the turquoise around near the top. I'm not really liking the way that pink looks there. A little bit more. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to take this piece of paper to the desktop. So we're just going to go with it the way it is. These little wrinkles will flatten out when I air dry it or blow dry it. I do want some more pink in there somewhere though. So I'm thinking maybe just dropping some in here. 
drop it a little in here. Put a little bit more in here. Then I'm going to darken, always darkening that outer ring up a little bit more. Um, I work with more water than most people do. So if you're one that uses less water than I'm using here, don't worry about it. Yours will be just beautiful and will work fine. I tend to get a little crazy. I'm going to bring out, uh, let me put a little bit more. That Hilo Cerulean is really my favorite color. I'm going to do that. I'm going to want to have some water in a few critical areas here, and I'll show you why. Um, I'm going to bring out my dryer, my heat gun. We're going to dry this and try not to blow everything off my desktop. And as I do that, I'm going to try to make a couple places where the color runs right off the paper to give us some runs to go with our explosion. My heat gun is not as quiet as Tracy's, so I'll be back in a second. working. So let's put some water there and try to blow that try to blow that water down. And not working. Okay, my runs are not going to be happening thing today. So Bring more of that in there. We're going to try to make a pathway. The fourth one, there we go. I'm going to do the same thing over here since that worked there. We're going to make a pathway. Blow that down. necessarily need it to drip on my desk. Let's see if we can make one up here. Make it a nice mess in my on my desktop over here. I know that much. Put a little water for encouragement. Try to blow it down and it is gonna go in a different direction. That's okay. Is that one work? That one has to do a little bit. Okay, so I guess it's a good thing I didn't take this to my desktop because I couldn't have done those runs that way if I had. So I'm going to clean that brush, put it away. Um, then I'm going to work on getting this totally dry so we can tangle it. Or mostly dry. I like the uh, color of the way it's working right now. I'm going to drop... A little, a few little water drops in here. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. That probably wasn't a good place to put one. Um, I'm thinking a little bit more of that pink in there might be nice. This paper from Hanamula Collection you can handle a lot of water. It does work better if you glue, tape it down to your, your desk to start with, though. Or actually, it comes in a in a um, glued block so that you don't take the paper out until you're finished. And that, that works much better that way than what I'm doing. Okay. I like the way that looks, so I promise I'm going to put my brush down and dry. <laughs>
don't like the way that looks, so I'm spraying some water to make it blend together. Okay, give that a second. Um, Galactic Explosion, the name of the what we're doing. My thought is it's going to look like the patterns, like the, like our galaxy is broken, it's exploded, and is expelling all of our patterns. Um, I'm going to go with some simple patterns because I know not all of you tangle, which is what that's called. And I'm going to explain them as we go so that you can learn how to do them too. Instead of let's see, let's bring this down a little bit, try to cover up some of that stuff I just messed up. Okay, I think this is dry enough to go to the next step that I want to do. I'm going to get rid of my paint brushes for now. Get rid of my paint set for now. Put the lid on the water so I don't turn it over on the desk. Because that's not fun. Get rid of my cheat sheets. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay, we are going to take what I like to call a trash plate, and we're going to put some, I've got golden fluid acrylics, zinc white, we're going to put that on here. I can get it open. And I typically add a little bit of water to it, just a little. And I'm going to take my fan brush Probably picked up that pink from underneath, I'm thinking. And we're just going to tap and make some stars on our little galaxy. And if they go all over your page, that's quite all right. It's not a problem. I'm going to let those dry for a minute. And I think I don't really like the way those look because there was pink on my trash plate underneath it that it picked up color. So I'm going to try a little bit more, see if I can get them white this time instead of pink. Not a huge difference, so I'm going to stop there and say enough is enough. And... Throw those things over there out of the way. I do need a paper towel. Okay, so you got your white stars. I have them all over my desk as well, which I always do. You should see my curtains in my window. And then um, white paint pen, Costco white paint pen. These are easy to use. You prime them to get them working. And then you can come in and make some real definite other stars. This is a 0.7 tip. I also have a 0.9 to 1.3 which should make bigger, bigger stars. 
and that's quite enough stars. So let's blast this one more time with a gun. Okay, I'm gonna call that dry enough. And I'm just gonna take a paper towel roll and roll right over the top of it so that any of those little stars that aren't dry, they'll take care of them. For tangling, I typically use this Tombow Mono Drawing Pin uh, 01. I like the tip on it. It is a permanent pin. It, you can draw with this and then paint over it with wet media and it won't um, mess things up. Remember, we're going with explosion. So I'm going to start with some what's called prawn toms and make them look like they have been spit right out of this thing. You go around in a spiral, another line around. And I don't want to close these all the way because I'm going to put tails on them like they are flying. And I'm going to do four or five of these and I'm going to leave them open-ended with little tails like they're flying out of here. Try to make them smaller as we get higher. So I only put two two spirals instead of three. And shorter shooting arms. I don't care if these run into the area where I'm gonna draw other patterns at because I'll work around them. be enough for that right now. Well, let's put one more over here. I think it will look a little bit better. Okay, then I'm going to go down here to the to the opening where it explodes, and I'm going to put more of these prawn toms. You just go one spiral around, pick your pin up, go down, go back around with another lap, and and make your connecting line. When I draw these uh, in other pattern, other things that I'm working on, a lot of times I'll put um, what's called tipple in them, little circles. I'm not sure that I'm gonna do that this time. Um, who am I kidding? Sure, I'm gonna put them in there. They'll work with this. They can be like little exploding bits of the, of the galaxy here. They could be like little star pieces or something. I'm going to stop all my lines where they meet at the top of my galaxy here. And just make a nice little pile of these where it looks like our escaping ones could have come from. We could even do some of the little tipples floating up into here because they may get shot out of there too. Um, a little bit higher. I'm looking for the tangled area to be bigger than it would have been if it was a full, a full circle. So I want my patterns to go a little bit higher than that. Um, I'm going to do one called uh, Rock and Roll Diva Dance. It's um, a pattern that Rick and Maria came up with. 
Not sure how they came up with the name for this particular one, but it's a, a lot of lines that echo each other or aura each other. It starts with that same little um, spiral thing. Then as you build, you draw these little bumps that come out from around it. And your line goes around it in an echo or an aura. And we're going to do that several times and each time keep adding these little bumps. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put them. That's totally up to you. You can fill them in with, with color or not fill them in. Sometimes I leave them open-ended and don't color them in. like that. That one I may just leave there. Here's my aura in line. Um, a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of fill there. Um, a little bit here. If you ever want to look at these uh, patterns and get a little bit better detail on how to draw them, my, my YouTube channel is uh, just called Alice Hendon, H-E-N-D-O-N. -E and if you look at my video section, I have step-by-step -step videos on how to draw this particular pattern. I'm going to put one more over here. Do my bumps. Tangly is a, a nice relaxing art, art to do. You know, learn yourself three or four patterns where you, you know them well and you can draw them without have, having to look at the directions. And you can just relax and draw. Tracy has her morning meditations. This would be perfect for morning meditation. Do your o-ring lines. A lot of the people that teach tangling use this as a therapy. They use it with children to develop uh, hand-eye coordination, motor skills. I always feel like I'm babbling when, we, when I do a video. I feel like I have to talk the whole time, and I know I don't, but... Okay, we're gonna squeeze a line out over here to look like it's being pushed. Let's do a bump here. Maybe one going into here. And again, we're going to make it look like it's been pushed out there, like it's being pushed out of the corner of our galaxy there. And I'm going to call that one good. Now that makes me feel like this one needs a couple more lines for balance. Um, there's a pattern called squid. You start with a bunch of little circles that leave the center of them open. And if you don't, you can always come back with that white paint pen and dot your circle there. Uh, from, from that little grouping of circles, start making arms. They can overlap. Remember, it's like they've been shot out of this galaxy. They've just been exploded out of there, which means the arms 
could be going up, it could be going down. Depends on how you want to draw them, how you want to interpret it. I like to give mine movement. Um, there's a pattern called bead lines that I'd like to use. I know you can draw this one even if you've never tangled. Just draw a line and put little dots on it, little beads. This is a good one for flowing, making flowing lines. And all the patterns that I've already drawn here, if this bead line covers them, that's okay because they, it, my line, my bead lines could be flowing in front of. So don't worry about drawing, drawing it around your patterns that's already there, just keep going. with the curvy lines. The curvy lines gives it gives it movement, makes it look like there's some force to it. And like it's organic and free flowing. <sighs> Let's see. I probably need something over here where it's getting shot out of the galaxy. These would be like threads of whatever gunk is inside there coming out. Let's draw one over this rock and roll diva dance. Um, let's go back to this rock and roll diva dance. Let's put another line on it. I meant to do that a minute ago and I didn't. And maybe one more. Where we just go around and outline what's already there. I think I'll put a couple more prom toms here. And they're gonna be drawn behind what's what's there. Like it'll go behind that rock and roll diva dance. Okay, let me think. Let's do one over here. Do our little dots on those bead lines. I think we need a few more of these small ones. One here. When I turn it and look at it, I'm looking for balance to see if it looks if it looks right. Okay, these open areas here, we're gonna fill these with what's called tipple. And that's just simply drawing little circles. And we're gonna fill that area up. Yeah, it's gonna cover up some of what we already put there and that's okay. We didn't know when we when we put the little dots there, the little circles there before blowing out, we, like, we didn't know what patterns we were gonna use. and. I tell you, when I started this, I only knew I was gonna use prom toms because everything I do starts with prom toms. It has kind of become my signature tangle. Oh, you know what else I didn't do? I didn't put my signature in here yet. Here's my chop for AH. I put that in my art and then I bury it 
so that it's hidden. I know it's there. My friend Evie knows it's there. She looks for it each time. You should always sign your art. And uh, that's one way I do it. But my shop is buried. Uh, I have had people steal my art before. And that buried shop is how I proved it was mine because they didn't know that was there. But I did because I put it there for a reason. Not just to autograph my art, so to speak, but to uh, be able to prove that it's mine if I ever need to. Actually, I've had to do that on more than one occasion. I think we're getting close to being finished here with the with the drawing part. Just looking for some balance here. I tried to keep the patterns few and easy to draw. Okay, I'm going to call that done. No, I'm not. I'm going to do one more of these over here. Then I'm going to call it done. And there's something we need that I forgot to, to tell you at the very beginning. We're going to need a pencil. And I'm digging in my drawer trying to find it. There's my shading device. What the heck is my little pencil? There it is. Okay, I have a pencil that I like to use for shading. A little pencil, <clears throat> a tortillon. We're gonna come in here with these prime toms and just put a little pencil at the bottom of each one of them. Don't get too excited about it looking great because we're going to use this to blend it and make it do look the way we want it to. Shading gives it a little dimension, gives it some depth, uh, some 3D-ness to your pictures. Not everybody likes to shade. I don't like to shade, but I know there's a reason for it. For these up here, I'm going to turn it upside down because I like to do the closed end of these things. We are almost done with our galactic explosion. Can't wait to see what it looks like. I hope that there's a uh, that you'll post yours in the Facebook group so that I can see what you do on these rock and roll duo dance shade in the valleys and then just push your your graphite with your tortilla shade in the valleys there's a valley there's a valley there's a little valley there's a bit of a valley so shade in the valleys all this exploding tipple I'm just going to go along the line where it meets everything else with a pencil line and then in circular motion just kind of push it up and I'm done that's our galactic explosion. I, I don't know how long it took to make it. Hopefully I fit within my time limit. Um, this has been fun. I hope that you will take this and run with it and make your own uh, piece of art with it. There are probably other colors you could use in your galaxy than I did. I'd love to see what you do with it and I hope that you will post. Thank you for letting me have this time here.